Good evening and welcome to the work session of the Mayor and City Council meeting. Um, Mayor Mo, I'll give you the floor. Mr. President, that's going to be uh, Director Lee. On the first agenda item. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Are you prepared for me to speak? Yes. All right. Thank you, President Smith, Mayor Moe, and Council members. Uh, this is for fleet requisition of Two 2023 Ford Machis. The Department of Public Works is requesting approval to purchase two 2023 Ford Machi all electric vehicles. These vehicles use less energy, less maintenance, and zero tailpipe emissions, resulting in significant savings over time and zero added depletion to the ozone layer. With the installation of EV charging stations on city property, we are now able to provide an avenue for EVs to be charged through the city. These are our first all-electric vehicles to be added to the city's fleet and will align us with an aggressive regional goal towards a greener, more sustainable future. The department solicited several quotes, including from vendors on state and county contracts. The returned accepted quote is from Apple Ford of Columbia, Maryland, who has the Baltimore County contract 000-4504. But the cost of the two vehicles from Apple Ford would be $55,795 a piece times two for a total of $111,590. Based on the fleet schedule, there are several administrative vehicles in the FY 2024 budget that are up for replacement that will be converting to EV and or hybrid based on pricing on and or hybrid based on pricing and availability. Funding is available through the adopted FY 2024 CIP fleet replacement schedule. The recommendation is from the departments for approval of the purchase of the two vehicles from Apple Ford at a total cost of $111,590. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from the council? Well, this item will be on the agenda for the mayor and city council meeting tonight, immediately following the work session at 6 p.m. this evening. All right, thank you, Director Lee. Agenda item number three is ordinance number 2015, an ordinance amending the general operating budget and capital improvement program of the Mayor and City Council of Laurel, Maryland for the fiscal year of July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023, and to provide an effective date. Director Saley, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the City Council and Mayor Mo. Um, I wanna thank you again for the opportunity to have this work session. I do apologize, I was not able to complete this for you uh, by last Friday. Um, at any rate, as we change into um, FY 2024, there's still much work to do for 2023. However, um, I have the, um, the beginnings of this ordinance um, with identified changes that we need to make. Um, on page two, where the numbers begin, you will see a reduction in the change column under federal grants. That is so that we can, for FY 2023, adjust our ARPA budget to what was actually um, used and collected. So if you'll recall, as we received the two allotments from the federal government, they're in a they were in a separate bank account. They have an, a separate offset account. And we record that revenue um, as the expenditures are actually made on the other side of the budget. So this reduction is not that we've given back any money or that we've lost any money. This is just in order to bring it down to what we actually spent during FY 2023. Are there any questions on that particular transaction? I don't have any, are there any from the council? No. Okay, moving on. Um, so further down in that same column, you'll see an addition of $75,130. <laughs> um, 
That is uh, to recognize the amount of insurance proceeds that we received um, for uh, vehicle repair. And um, there was an HVAC repair that did uh, was covered by insurance at the police department. There was also a uh, plumbing expenditure repair that was needed um, in the back hallway restrooms at City Hall that required, it was a little bit more in depth um, than just the plumbing. There was wall replacement and others. So um, we received the 75,130 from the insurance um, and though that money is dispersed on the expenditure side um, to the police department maintenance budget, um, the municipal center maintenance budget, <clears throat> And also a transfer to um, the CIP for some vehicle replacements. Um, and as well, part of it goes to the public works budget for vehicle maintenance for those repair for the vehicle repairs that were necessary. Below that is the 40,513. That um, again, as you uh, remember. The financial activities of the 4th of July committee need to be brought through the city's operating budget when it occurs. So again, they have a separate bank account uh, just because the nature of how that group was started. But as they're, uh, they, we pay for the fireworks and all of the other items that are associated with the event. Uh, we'll show this on the revenue side, but there's also corresponding um, entry on the expenditure budget under community promotions. So overall, the operating budget decreases by $10,536,952. Okay, so further down on page two, we'll get into the expenditure budgets. You'll notice um, that there is a budget transfer column. So when budget transfers are made, um, Mr. Lee and Mr. Bailey for Public Works and Parks and Recreation, um, they have various, we'll call them sub-departments, but they do have their own individual department numbers. They have the flexibility to transfer funds between you know, the municipal center and the armory if, if that situation um, were required. But because of the way uh, the budget is adopted at the department number level. Um, we need to, you know, reflect any of those interdepartmental transfers in an ordinance um, for the budget. So you'll see that there was um, changes to ground maintenance, the municipal center, the public works facility, the armory. Um, these transfers were made by Parks and Recreation to purchase certain equipment such as an aerator for the grounds crew, two new park grills for the lake, um, two air compressors, some tables. Um, so those are the numbers in the budget transfer column on page two. While we're still on page two, you'll see that offset addition of 40,513 going into community promotions, which again is for the 4th of July committee financial activity. Below that in the changes column is a $12,027 going into the municipal center. And these were the insurance proceeds from the restroom work um, in the back of the building. Moving on to page three, you'll see the 15,215 going into the police department facility, that was for the, um, that was insurance proceeds for the HVAC issue there. Uh, back over to the budget transfer column, um, there were budget transfers where not having the building to a for in operation yet, funds were able to be taken from that department budget of uh, the 294 budget um, in order to make those purchases for parks and recreation. Again, the aerator, the air compressors, the grills. Under public works, which is the 400 department section, uh, 401 to 450, 
are all public works department numbers. <clears throat> You'll have transfers um, in order to staff the changes with the um, with the refuse compost and and recycling um, rollout of the new bins. Um, there were you know staffing needs across their departments, um, so those transfers were able to be done. On the right hand side there, you'll see the 22,000 going into automotive maintenance. Again, those are insurance proceeds. 35,000 and 41,000 going into waste collection and recycling respectively coming from the snow removal budget in order to, um, because there were increases to the disposal fees. Again, with ch staffing changes and some movement of staff from one of their, what we'll call sub departments to another, those transfers were needed. Moving further down into public, or I'm sorry, parks and recreation programs, um, you'll have the 2,500 and the 2,000 going into the two uh, pools, the Main Street Pool and the Greenview Drive Pool. And those funds were to purchase um, new chairs for the decks, as well as the um, more filter equipment. Further down, but back on the right-hand side, you'll see a transfer from property insurance into bonding insurance. And that was an unanticipated market adjustment to the cost of the bonding insurance uh, for my bond as the treasurer's bond, um, as well as those that are covered by, uh, because they handle our money, uh, you know, cashiers and people at front desks and others that handle money are covered by the bond. Miscellaneous financial uses, 25,888. So that is the, the department number in which we transfer funds from the general operating budget to the capital improvement program. And those, again, that's insurance proceeds um, because of the, um, the funds that we received from damaged vehicles that were able to transfer to the CIP for future purchases of uh, replacement vehicles. And then the last item you'll see, so this is your expenditure offset of the adjustment, the ARPA funds of uh, $10 million. So again, we're, we're continue to be in balance um, with the overall reduction of 10 million, 536,952. On the top of page four, we're showing the 25,888 going into the, the fleet replacement project in the capital improvement program and adjusting that grand total of the FY23 projects to 17,059,863. And that concludes my presentation, Mr. President. Be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Derek Saylor. Um, are there any questions from the council on that or comments? Yes, I have a question, Mr. President. Sure, Councilman Zidnor. Well, yeah, question and a statement, well, both. Um, you might have answered this uh, already, Director Saylor, though, um, on the APRA funding. I know we, uh, any funding available, any funding left, that, that 10 million, does that $10 million carry over to this um, to 24 budget? Yes, sir. Okay, and that $24 million been uh, 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 allocated for things already? I will check for you, uh, but I'm pretty sure that everything that we have has been allocated. It, it was just a matter of whether we would expend it all in 2023 or we would have any to carry over to 24. So this okay. will allow us to further, even if it's allocated or committed, we'll be able to pay it in 24. Right. So, okay, so so we have ten million left over from on Apple from Apple money, American Rescue money. We have that, but it may all be uh, yeah, it may all be committed. I'll, I'll check yeah. for you. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, thank you so much. That's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. Any more questions or comments from the council before we move forward? All right. Well, Mr. Mr. President, 
Yes, I'm sorry, if I could just, we're still going through the records, receiving, um, as I said, June 30 only means to us that nobody can, you know, buy anything else or, or commit to any services using FY 2023 money. So we're still compiling records and, and the money that we're received from the county and the state. Um, so I, I will most likely need to come to you or provide to you before the meeting on the 24th some form of uh, further adjustments. Sure, that's, that's fine. And thank you for all your hard work that we just did in your group. Um, this item thank will you. be on the agenda for the Mayor and City Council meeting immediately following the work session at 6 p.m. this evening. And there being no further business to come before the Mayor and City Council, this work session is adjourned. See you guys at the council. Thank you.